Hey everyone, it is Danny and welcome to this update video this evening. I hope that you guys are doing really wonderful. And so in this video, I will be taking you through the latest in terms of what is happening across the Caribbean and surrounding areas as well. There is that tropical wave that is uh, going to be making its way into the Caribbean and inducing rainfall across the Lesser Antilles. Another is over in the Western Caribbean, about to exit the basin over into the Eastern Pacific. And we'll also be talking about the updated prediction from one of the agencies, the Colorado State University, uh, which is expecting a more active season than their previous prediction. And so before I go into details, please do subscribe if you haven't yet done so and tap the bell so that you never miss an important update. Okay, and so first things first, we are taking a look at what is happening across the North Atlantic. And here we can see that there is some activity across some areas, parts of the U.S., especially along the East Coast, going up into Atlantic Canada as well, uh, off the Southeastern Coast. There's lots of activity there and even in the Gulf of Mexico. But as for the Caribbean, for most Northern Islands, there isn't too much happening this afternoon. Uh, for the Bahamas, though, for the Northwestern Bahamas, we can definitely see some thunderstorm activity within the area. But let's take a closer look at the region here and we're starting out with northern South America as well as uh, parts of the eastern Caribbean. And here we can see that there is lots of activity developing across some areas this afternoon. Uh, Colombia, parts of Venezuela, especially uh, the northeastern part of Venezuela, the axis of the wave extends into uh, the vicinity. And uh, we even see some thunderstorms across some spots in Suriname and even going into French Guiana as well. But there we have most of that activity uh, just outside the islands of the Eastern Caribbean that will be making its way in as we head into tonight and into tomorrow as such that rainfall chance is going to be increasing for most islands uh, and some areas could even experience very heavy rainfall which could lead to uh, flash flooding so please be mindful of that guys and uh, this is definitely looking more widespread compared to this morning and so uh, let's move up a bit more into the area for Barbados it is likely overcast maybe with some brief showers you can let me know in the comments what is happening there just off st lucia there is some thunderstorm activity similar story even as we take a look uh down into trinidad and tobago there is some activity noted there so please let me know in the comments what conditions are like for your area but for most of the lesser Antilles, maybe some uh, brief showers at times, but uh, mostly sunshine as of right now. Uh, drifting more to the west, we can see here that there is lots of activity in the southwestern Caribbean. There's an elder tropical wave, which is noted in the area, producing lots of activity. Uh, we see lots of thunderstorms developing across most of the Yucatan, even in some spots in Belize, Guatemala, El Salvador, uh, Honduras, Nicaragua, even down into parts of Panama, and some activity is also across Costa Rica. Down in the ABC Isles, not much, maybe some passing clouds at the most uh, for the Cayman Islands. Jamaica looking pretty clear right now, but uh, there might be a brief shower or so, an isolated thunderstorm as we head later into this afternoon. But for most areas, as I said, it is pretty dry and even windy uh, for some of us here. And so now let's go ahead and take a look at the uh, latest Saharan dust map. And here we can see the Saharan earlier, uh, and where we see more of those shades of oranges and reds, as I always say. Uh, uh, that is where we have the areas of more abundant dry air and we can see that other plume and that is going to be making its way into the region come next week and there is some uh dust and dry air still lingering in parts of the caribbean especially the northern caribbean uh there is an activity in association with the tropical wave and uh well off africa well not very far from the coast but off africa is a low pressure area and that is where we see some activity but development is not expected right now and just behind it is the axis of another tropical wave and uh there is another that is actually out there but no significant activity is in association with it as of right now but in terms of the one that is closing in on the Caribbean, we're looking at the wind shear map right now from the GFS. And so uh, when, we sh when we see more of those shades of yellows, oranges, and reds, that is where we have that stronger upper level wind. And it comes in from the opposite direction. Those are the westerlies. And what happens is that as showers and thunderstorms develop, uh, they really just displace that activity to the east. And that is kind of what we're seeing happening right now with this tropical wave here. Notice that uh, pattern of how the activity is. Uh, 
uh, appearing on these satellite imagery. That is the work of the wind shirt. It's also helping to suppress some of that thunderstorm development. But as we head into the rest of today, go into tomorrow, it is likely that we're going to be seeing some new spots of deep convection developing, thus resulting in a uh, lot of showers and thunderstorms. And so, guys, of course, I'll continue to keep you updated on that. And so now let's move on to the next segment of this update. All right, and so now we want to get into the latest prediction coming from Colorado State University. So they have uh, made a previous prediction back in June, I believe on the first day of the hurricane season, June 1st, expecting 15 named storms, of which seven could become hurricanes and three major hurricanes. Now, since then, they have up to that number uh, of storms, hurricanes, and majors that are expected. And by the way, for not familiar with it, a major hurricane is basically a hurricane that is of category three, four, or five. Don't mind that. So a major hurricane is cat three, four, or five. And so uh, the recent prediction, however, that was released yesterday is calling for three more named storms, 18 named storms, two more hurricanes, now at nine hurricanes, and one more major hurricane, four major hurricanes. So the latest prediction calling for an above average hurricane season of 18 named storms, nine hurricanes, and four four major hurricanes. So this is very interesting here. Now, why is this so? If you're not familiar with it, uh, an El Nino is now happening over in the Eastern Pacific. So there is a region along the Equatorial Pacific that is called the Enso region. And usually when the sea surface temperatures are above average, that is known as El Nino. And that results in, of course, uh, more favorable conditions for development over in the eastern Pacific, but less conducive conditions over in the Atlantic Basin, in that a lot more wind shear is induced. And uh, as a result of that, we typically have reduced activity in the Atlantic, and usually during El Nino seasons, there are also reduced sea surface temperatures. But that is not the case with this season, and that is why it is a very complex one, and that is why there is so much uncertainty down the road. But uh, it is looking as though we're we're going to be seeing an above average hurricane season because uh, we have these above average temperatures across the tropical Atlantic and the subtropical Atlantic as well. And that is the primary uh, factor that helps to build these thunderstorms, which in turn can develop uh, into tropical cyclones. So this fuel is just bubbling out there. And, and as we head to the peak, we can expect a lot more warming across parts of the Atlantic. And so, and that is also the reason we have these tropical waves coming into the Caribbean and inducing so much rainfall across the east because even last July this was not something seen it was very dry and stable out there because of the abundant Saharan dust as well as that wind shear the wind shear is still pretty much there uh, stronger than normal at times which is expected in an El Nino season but again those warmer sea surface temperatures will be trying to come back to the effect of the El Nino and that is why so many of our agencies are calling for an above average season. Some sources even calling for a hyperactive season, such as the University of Arizona, which is expecting 25 named storms. Very interesting here. And it is not at all impossible because we've seen many crazy things as of lately, and uh, that is not something that is off the table. However, despite whatever activity happens this year, it only takes one to really be the talk of the season. Last year, it was Hurricane Ian, which caused tremendous damage across parts of the Northwestern Caribbean, as well as the US and even up into uh, Canada as well. But of course, I am here to keep you updated ahead of time. So regardless of what's going to be happening, I post my daily update video so that you're always in the know with what is going on out there. And so that is what I wanted to share with you in this update. And I hope that you found it to be quite informative. But if you have any questions, feel free to leave them down in the comments. I will respond once I get the chance. And remember to always be weatherwise.